We're so privileged today to have Dr. Rob Wenham, an expert here in gynecologic malignancies. Hello, Dr. Wenham, and thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Hu. It's my pleasure to be here. So uh, you specialize in diseases such as ovarian cancer. Can you let us know a little bit about ovarian cancer? How frequently uh, do we see that in the U.S., in the world, and, and uh, what is the treatment like today? Yeah, ovarian cancer, which, which we probably have misnamed for quite a while because it's probably primarily fallopian tube cancer, uh, but it does come in many different forms. Most people think of ovarian cancer, they're thinking of the epithelial high-grade ovarian cancers, which make up the majority, and they also turn out to be a very deadly cancer, so it's the fourth most common cancer death for women in the United States. Uh, where we've been uh, recently is that we were in the age of chemotherapy for a long time, and we went through about a decade where no new novel combinations or new drugs were coming out that were making an impact. And then suddenly over the last five years, we've had an explosion of new FDA indications, most of those around either anti-vascular endothelial growth factor or around DNA repair mechanisms with a better understanding of homologous recombination repair deficiency, or something we just call HRD because it's easier, or something you know around uh, BRCA, which would probably be the, the archetype of, of HRD. Uh, but now you're uh, really uh, in this new trial, you're using immunotherapy. So tell us about uh, immunotherapy and the use of immunotherapy for ovarian cancer. It means a lot when we say immunotherapy, doesn't it? Uh, there, we, we think of antibodies as a type of immunotherapy. And, and certainly we have a lot of antibody uh, studies here that look at targeting different markers on cells that are specific for ovarian cancer. In fact, we were just part of the, the major FDA approval uh, through the phase two and phase three trials uh, using an antibody to detect cancer at the time of surgery. And we're the first to offer it here uh, in this part of the United States and are, and are now helping detect more cancer at the time of surgery. So that's almost a type of immunotherapy if you wanna think of it. Uh, but in the way we usually think about it, it's like some way of targeting the body's immune system to kill the cancer cells. And, and, and as far as that goes, we have everything from antibody drug conjugates, which take chemotherapy and have antibodies. We have checkpoint inhibitor trials. Uh, we have also cellular therapy trials, which is uh, the one that uh, I think we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. So your newest trial that you're going to talk about is using uh, CAR T therapy. Can you tell us a little bit about CAR T therapy and what it is? Absolutely. Uh, simply put, it's where we take the patient's immune cells and engineer them to go to, after a very specific target. And we choose that target because it's mainly on the cancer cells and not on normal cells. One of the things that makes a cancer a cancer is that it's changed the genes that are either turned on or turned off. And this can lead to the cancer making some molecules that are typically the proteins or glycolipids that may have only been made maybe in early development. They may be made at greatly increased levels or in the case of the one that we're trying to target, it's one that's specific to the type of tissue which is ovarian cancer tissue. Uh, so for us, we're doing uh, a target towards uh, follicle stimulating hormone receptor, and that is a um, uh, uh, something that's found on normal ovarian tissue because it's involved in follicle generation every month, and that's where eggs or oocytes uh, can develop in case there happens to be fertilization. Um, the fact that it's made in normal ovaries is actually not an issue for us targeting it because when women with ovarian cancer have typically had their ovaries already removed or we want to target that exact tissue anyway. So in some ways, it's an ideal uh, thing to target. So uh, what is uh, the eligibility? Which patients are going to be able to get on your trial? So this is, a, this is a first in human trial. So it has a fairly wide um, um, eligibility, which is important for a lot of patients because we expect that patients will have already received at least a couple prior treatments for ovarian cancer. But we want people who have good performance status. Uh, it's important that we take patients on these trials who, are, who, who we know have the wherewithal to withstand uh, novel therapies because we're really trying to explore, uh, is this feasible? Is it tolerable? And what is the right dose of cells to be giving? Wonderful. And, and tell me, when do you think it's going to start? And when do you uh, expect to have your first results? So the first part is a screening study and just purely requires the patient to say that we can test their tissue. And it looks like they're going to generally be eligible for the, for the second part, which is the interventional study. And so if a patient 
is, is, is okay on the tissue testing, they can sign up for the interventional phase and that's where we take out the cells and engineer them and reinfuse them. Uh, so far, we just opened up this uh, study uh, within the last uh, month and a half or so. Uh, we have three patients who are on the screening part. Uh, two of their um, assays have come back, and I'm, I'm happy to say that one of them just came back today, and it looks like uh, at least eligible on that. Um, uh, really exciting progress, Dr. Wenham, on cell therapy for GYN malignancies. So uh, thanks so much for being with us here today. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.